Did you know you can use PowerShell to produce speech and music? This can be useful in certain situations where you need to inform your user with an audio cue marking start or end of a task. But this can also be used in fun PowerShell scripts. Let's start with speech. There are few ways to create text to speech, also known as TTS in a script. SP voice method is a built in method we can use to do this. So let's use that. The first thing what I'm going to do is to create a variable called voice. So I'm going to create a new SP voice object. Basically, the object is already there, but what I'm really doing is the create a new SP voice variable. Okay. So to create a variable in PowerShell, we're going to use the dollar sign and we're going to say voice. And that's my variable. And we're going to have a new object. And that object going to have a switch called com object. And that ob uh, switch uh, and the object going to have SAPI dot SP voice. So that is my variable with the SP voice method. Next thing what I'm going to do is set the speed in which the voice will be outputted from the device. So let's call this set speed and I'm going to call in the voice variable and I'm going to change the rate in that variable going to spit out the text or text to speech. In this case, the default value is zero. Any negative value, such as let's say negative five is slower. Any positive value, let's say five or six, for example, it's faster. So for now, we'll just leave it as the default value. Next thing, we need a text that will be converted by this object, uh, not the object, I mean the, the SP voice method into something voice, right? You need to have something text that will be converted into voice. To do that, we gonna, uh, let's say here, the text to speech. Okay. And then we're gonna call in that same voice variable. Dot, now we're gonna go speak. And in here, we are going to enter what we want to say. So let's say good morning Sanuja your PowerShell script is completed so that's what I want to say I noticed there is a red line right here that because uh, you can't have space here so make sure that we remove that otherwise it'll spit out an error so now that there are no errors we have the voice variable with the method SP voice and we are running at a rate of zero and we are taking this text and we're gonna convert that into speech. And again, uh, don't put space right here because initially I type a space that's incorrect. Uh, there will be an error spit out if you have a space there. And now let's play this. Good morning, Sanuja. Your PowerShell script is completed. So what had happened here is it took this text and converted that into speech and it is spitting out from your device uh, speakers. If I change the rate from zero to let's say negative five and run this. Good morning, Sanuja. Your PowerShell script is completed. The output is now slower. You can also increase the output by putting a positive value. Let's say positive four and then just run it. Good morning, Sanuja. Your PowerShell script is completed. And again, the default value is zero. Good morning, Sanuja. Your PowerShell script is completed. So that's how you get your PowerShell script to speak to your user. 
There are a few other ways to do this. For example, we can do add type. And uh, if you go assembly name and system dot speech. And using this, let's call speak variable. I'm going to create a variable called speak. And I will create a new object. System dot speech dot synthesis dot uh, speech uh, synthesizer this this one so this is another way to get your device to speak and if we, if you call in the speak variable uh, with dot speak and then let's copy and paste the same thing here so I don't need to type it this will also do the same thing as what is shown up here so in here it, we are not using the uh, sp voice object instead of we are using the system dot speech and uh, this is uh, the variable so let's make this thing like this so this is another way of doing it So I know it's the way to do a text to speech. So we have using we are using system.speech and we have the variable speak. And then in here we have the text to speech info. So this is the second way of doing it. So let's say good afternoon here. So we know it's a second one. And if I run this part, it will still do the similar thing as this one. So let's go ahead and do it. Good afternoon, Sanuja. Your PowerShell script is completed. So there you go. So you can do text-to-speech in many, many different ways. Like these are a couple of common ways. The PS voice is the typical one that I use for text-to-speech on my PowerShell script, but both of them would, would, would do the same thing. And again, you can change the rate uh, in here. Uh, as I mentioned, so you can put it to, for example, the speed uh, rate change. There are rate changes in here as well, but this just gives you an overview of how you can use text to speech in PowerShell. So let's run the whole script for the final time, and then we will move on to using PowerShell to create music notes, right? So let's go ahead. Good morning, Sanuja. Your PowerShell script is completed. Good afternoon, Sanuja. Your PowerShell script is completed. Let's say you want to play music, not text to speech, but music using your PowerShell script. You can do that. Basically, there is a system console beeps where you can vary the frequency and duration of those beeps to create music. Those beeps, again, can be useful in certain situations where you need the user to inform about a PowerShell script either running in the background has been completed. But those beeps can be varied using changing the frequency and duration. Hence, you can create pretty much PowerShell music. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a type called system console. So if I type system dot console, that is a PowerShell type. So let's call this uh, creating music. It's just a, uh, a note so that I know what we are doing. And we're going to use the beep. The beep has two variables, frequency and duration. So frequency, uh, let's say we're going to use the frequency 500. And let's say duration 500. What that will do is in this uh, system console type and then the beep method that we are using, this method take two input, which is the frequency and the variable. We are telling the PowerShell script to go ahead and produce this sound using these two variables. So let's go ahead and see what happened. 
So that's what it is. So I play twice. So beep, it, it gives a beep and it'll give you a frequency and a variable with that uh, particular, uh, you know, particular method. Now, using system console, if I change this for let's say 190, just put 190. And then if I play this now, it'll have that beep sound. So if, if we put 500, and if I play this now, I give you that. If I put 190, play it again, it will give you that sound. So this is basically the frequency and this is duration. So if I put instead of 500, let's say put 5000. And if I play this now, so it plays longer. So that's why we put 500, which is more manageable and reasonable. And if you change uh, this to instead of uh, 190 or 200, let's put a bigger value, let's say 1500. And if I play this, that part, see, it changes. So this is frequency and this is duration. You can also make this noise, notes, uh, space apart using like you know how how apart these notes will be played using the start dash sleep and then the switch milliseconds and then the zero will be you know no uh you know uh, differentiation between the uh, two notes so this is a one note let's create another note by just copying and pasting this one and let's just put this note as 1500 uh, frequency and what it, this is doing is basically um, it playing two notes but it will have a start sleep in the middle and remember the frequency is in hertz and the duration is in milliseconds and uh, the start sleep is also in milliseconds so if I play this part this section of the code like that but if you put uh, if you increase the milliseconds to let's say 500, if I play this now, it'll wait. So if you put like for example, the duration to 1000 milliseconds, and if I play these two notes, there you go. So given these parameters, can you create music? The answer is yes, you can. You can either use just uh, these uh, beeps straight out of uh, here as it is, or you can actually put this into a custom function and create a song out of it. So let's say I want to uh, put this into a custom function. If you are a good, um, you know, if you are a good PowerShell scripter, you will create custom functions. So let's create a custom function. So I'm going to create a function to play a single note. Why? Because I can. You don't need to. Then I will actually play happy birthday to you using this uh, particular, uh, uh, you know, particular code. So I'm going to call uh, in a function. And we're gonna create a name for this function. So let's say play dash note. So that would be my function. And the parameters gonna be, we're gonna put int, that's an integer, and the variable frequency. And then you're gonna have another int. Again, it's gonna be a duration, which has to be, uh, a pretty much a, you need to have a comma here by the way uh, a duration is basically again a integer and what we're going to do with this uh, function is again you're going to call in the console and we don't even need system.console we can just go console and let's go beep And what are our two variables? Well, we have frequency and then we have duration.
because those are the two variables we created. Even though these variables are customs, remember this is actually coming from system.console. Console is the one that we are calling in and that's what we have here. And then we're gonna create start, uh, sleep, which is this one right here, I introduced at the top, uh, which I'm not gonna use it, you know, we are not gonna play this part. We're just gonna start playing from here. And we're gonna need it in milliseconds and we're gonna call in the variable duration. And we're gonna multiply that by 0 0.1. What that point 0.1 is gonna do, you can look that as a, like a small pause between nodes. Why? Because it'll give you more clear, uh, you know, output. And you can increase this or decrease this according to the way that you want to play this particular song. So what I will play, uh, the what I will create with play note function that I have created here. So this is this is our entire code. So let's move this to just to see the code. I'm gonna play this part, but I'm gonna create uh, what we call happy birthday. Okay, uh, that's what uh, I'm gonna create uh, for this particular uh, script. I'm not gonna type everything out because I already have done my work. I'm simply gonna paste it here, the happy birthday code. Uh, then I will explain what it is and you can pause this video and go back and forth if you want to learn how to do it. So here you go, paste. Uh, what I have pasted is, so I have this function to play a single note. And uh, so this is where we start our code. So let's not get confused with the items we discussed earlier. So these are the other stuff that we discussed earlier. So we're gonna play a single note using this function. And we're gonna call in this thing, this one. We have called in 25 times actually, <laughs> shows right here, play note and then start playing uh, the notes based on the frequency and the duration. We have the duration already here. And then uh, the start sleep is every, each time a note goes through, there's a start sleep of 0.1. So I can go ahead and start playing this and it should play happy birthday to you. Uh, so in, in here, if you wanna play, you know, you can say Sanuja for example, uh, that's the name and every time a note plays it takes the frequency and the duration and that's how it, the output going to be so let's play happy birthday to you using powershell script uh, that we have created right here so i'm highlighting this script because i don't want to play the one at the top i'm using visual studio code so let's play this part That's how you can play music using PowerShell beeps. If you would like to know how to write this script, you can simply pause this video and go back and check all the notes that I have entered, such as right here. Please make sure to go and check my PowerShell lessons already posted on my YouTube channel. If you have any questions or concerns, please reach out to me. And until next time, thank you so much.